Hey gang, this is Colin Reese. I wanted to talk about Thomas Tuchel today. I've talked about him in a previous video, and the reason I'm talking about him again is I really think this coach or, or manager, as, as a lot of people say around the world, in the U.S. we say coach, but Thomas Tuchel for me is one of these football managers who insist on overcomplicating everything. He'll, he'll give way too many detailed tactical instructions to his players and he kind of tries to reinvent the wheel. So what he's, Thomas Tuchel is a big fan of, of the high press and he's so adamant about the importance of this high press is he, he tends to make it more important than just his team's overall um, tactical ability to play well together. So he'll, so what I mean by that is instead of putting together his best attacking um, three or his best midfield three or four, um, he'll, he'll tend to like field whichever midfielders and um, forwards um, can press the best. And so his focus should be on with like, normally people use a, a front six, so sometimes three midfielders and three attackers or four midfielders and two attackers, um, you get the idea. So this is just everyone in front of the defense and the goalkeeper. So normally what you want to do is you want to have a combination of um, defensive midfielders and more attack-minded midfielders in your midfield. And you want your attackers to be obviously players that can set up goals or score goals. And Thomas Tuchel tends to like really focus on the, the pressing or defensive abilities of his attackers. And this would be like wanting your defense and your goalkeeper to provide assist. Obviously your outside backs or your full backs, if you're using a, a four man defense, are important in the attack and providing width and providing assist and crosses. But you know, in general, you want your defense to be focused on defending and your attack focused on attacking. And Thomas Tuchel seems to be so adamant about his system that he seems to view like the attacking threat and ability of his attacking players as secondary to their ability to just run and press the opposing defense. And I, I don't know why he's so fixated on this. Uh, one of the reasons that I dislike him so much as a coach is I think rather than him fitting in, um, you know, adjusting his formation and tactics around his players and their strengths and weaknesses and how best to use them, he'll he just he forces his players into a preconceived uh, formation, even if they don't necessarily fit into that formation or tactical setup very well. And you could tell when he took over with Chelsea that for no reason he made changes that were just unnecessary. So he kind of dropped Reese James. So sometimes Reese James plays and sometimes he doesn't. But Reese James is one of the best right backs in the world. And I, I really think he could play for anyone. Like if he could play for Real Madrid tomorrow or Bayern Munich tomorrow or Barcelona tomorrow. Now, obviously when I say this, um, I'm not doing a deep dive into who he'd be competing with at those clubs. But my point was he could definitely play. He's definitely good enough to play there right away without looking like a fish out of water that, or without looking like he wasn't good enough to be there. But so Thomas Tuchel, um, rather than keeping Reese James at right back, insisted on switching to the three-man defense where he had Aspilicueta as the right defender and then he dropped Ben Chilwell who was playing as the left back. So Chelsea's defense was excellent beforehand. It was one of the best in the world, I think. It had Reese James at right back. Um, 
Thiago Silva at center back, and I actually think he's still the best center back in the world. And then Kurt Zuma at center back, and I think Kurt Zuma should start for France, um, and I think he's better than Umtiti. So Chelsea and Thomas Tuchel already had Reese James at right back, Thiago Silva and Kurt Zuma as the center backs, and Ben Chilwell as the left back. And one of the first things Thomas Tuchel did was switch to a three-man defense where he put Rudiger, um, Thiago Silva, and then Aspilicueta as his three defenders. And this messed up um, the outstanding back line that he already had. So the fact that he did this to me just indicates that he's more concerned about fitting his players into the formation tactics he wants to use instead of playing the players where they played the best. And he shouldn't have made this adjustment. It served no purpose. And if you look at more of his tactics, like one of the things he's done is he has him in Ukraine playing Christian Pulisic, who, even though I'm American, I think anyone around the world can see how technical and fast and direct and creative uh, Pulisic is, plus he can score. So it's not just a, an American bias that I want Pulisic to play. But Thomas Tuchel has pretty much every game found some reason to leave Pulisic off the roster or um, just not start him. And it's been totally nonsensical. And if you look at Chelsea's squad, um, if say if you went with the 4-3-3 formation, what you'd so I've already gone over the defense, but what you'd want to do in the midfield and in the attack is you'd want to have Jorginho at the base of the midfield with N'Golo Kante playing as an eight to the right of Jorginho and in front of him. And on the left, you'd want um, Mateo Kovacic. And Kovacic, as I've said before in other videos, was widely praised at Real Madrid as a number 10. And he didn't get to play there that often because Luka Modric was always playing, but the uh, Spanish press just always had a lot of praise for Kovacic. And he can play as a, a center midfielder, and he's done well at that position, not only with Real Madrid, but for Chelsea. But Chelsea's best midfield would be Jorginho, Conte, and Kovacic, in my opinion. And I don't think that's some crazy, um, idiosyncratic choice of players that only I would pick. I think just anyone that knew anything about football would see them and advocate for them there. And say you wanted to make the midfield a diamond formation, then you could put uh, Mason Mount in front of them as the number 10, and then you'd have a diamond midfield with uh, Jorginho at the back, and then you'd have Kovacic and Conte as the, um, the two like box-to-box -box midfielders, and you'd have Mason Mount as the attacking midfielder or, or number 10. And then... For the two forwards, it would make sense to play Christian Pulisic as a second striker. And then um, Chelsea's spoiled for choice as far as center forwards. They have Olivier Giroud, um, who's you know proven how good he is over the years for France and for various Premier League teams. And he's not just a hold-up player. He also is good to score golosos. And he's an underrated player who's, who's outstanding. And then Chelsea also have Tammy Abraham, who I think is a complete striker, and he's fast, aggressive, direct. He makes nonstop runs off the ball. He can score at both feet and his head. He's um, He can get behind the defense with the speed. He's got nice 1v1 dribbling ability, and he's a good finisher. And they also have Timo Werner, who they just bought, and... He's been kind of forced to play just a wide the smorgasbord of positions, but no one would doubt his talent as a center forward. So um, Thomas Tuchel has these three center forwards he can play along with Pulisic, and he's just insisted every game, just, he's just absolutely married to this idea of the three-man, the defense. And why it's so bad is that he has arguably the two starting fullbacks for the English national team on his squad and 
those two fullbacks are two fullbacks that could play for basically any team in the world. And he's kind of benching them some of the time because he's been favoring Alonzo over Chilwell. And he's been, you know, forcing Reese James to play a kind of different position than he's used to. So all of these moves to me are just nonsensical. And I think this indicates a coach who's really just focused on proving that he's the the most like creative and out of the box thinker rather than trying to field the the best team that that Chelsea has. And it's as a fan it's just really annoying, obnoxious to see this. And as an American, as I mentioned earlier, it's kinda like Pulisic, like every single I mean um the coach Thomas Tuchel, every single game has some excuse why Pulisic can't make the roster or start. And it's really just annoying at this point. And Thomas Tuchel's done similar stuff at PSG. Like he liked doing the three man defense at PSG, and a lot of his selections there weren't good as well and and PSG was just loaded with players and even though they got to the final the Champions League last year Thomas Tuchel just really overcomplicated his lineups and his tactics and it just really made no sense and I'm not sure what the motivation is behind doing this but I think a lot of these people are pretty much copiers of Pep Guardiola and this sounds kind of dumb, but you can even tell by the way they dress that they imitate Guardiola's clothes. They're, they're really about the V-neck sweaters, the skin-tight pants, um, and kind of the dress sneakers, along with taking like copious notes. And I, I, I don't know why they insist on copying Pep Guardiola so much, because Pep Guardiola has only won the Champions League when he was at Barcelona and he had Sergio Busquets, Xavi, um, Andres Iniesta, Lionel Messi, and then tons of other players. But he hasn't been successful at Bayern Munich or at Manchester City with his constant playing players out of positions and you know focusing on overly complicated tactics. And I view Thomas Tuchel as kind of just a similar coach and, you know, for all these reasons, I think Thomas Tuchel can't coach his way out of a cardboard box. And I hope Chelsea get rid of him soon. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. See you next time.